Welcome to Sales Master Series Training from Sales Divi. 10 Always is targeted to sales professionals engaged in account development to strategic accounts, sometimes called named accounts, national accounts, or major accounts. Typically, a sales professional is able to invest more time in preparing for prospecting to larger accounts with a longer sales cycle. If your job is to make a high volume of cold calls every day, you won't be able to prepare for calls this thoroughly. But some of the advice may still be helpful to you. In this video, we'll talk about the 10 things you should always do before and during important first introductory calls. We call them the 10 always. We'll quickly discuss each of the 10 always, along with tips to make you more effective. If you prepare for introductory or cold calls by planning around this model, you'll find your calls are much easier, and most importantly, you get to the next step more often. Let's jump right in with the first always, knowledge. It's obvious that you'd always research and know your prospect before picking up the phone. What may be less obvious is what you want to know and how to go about getting that knowledge. You absolutely need to know the fundamental things about the prospect's business and also about the person you're trying to reach. First, study the company. And don't just study what they say. Study what others say about them and what they actually do. A few minutes on the company website will give you some insight into what the target company wants their customers to know, but you need more. If you're serious about getting into a large new account, you need to get the whole story. Include these resources in your research. Recent news directly from the internet, not just company press releases. If your prospect is publicly traded on the stock market, get their financial filings and read the fine print. Use the SEC's Edgar system for financial information. Read what financial and industry analysts are saying about the company. Don't stop with what's written about the company in the media. Review their competitors' websites. Find user or consumer forums discussing the company. Research news about the company's industry. Is it growing? Is it in trouble? Next, turn your attention to researching the people you'll be contacting and the people around them. If you've been doing this for a while, you'll know you can get ideas on whom to contact from services like Jigsaw and Spoke, and list vendors like OneSource or Hoover's. Keep going. Get bio information on your target prospect and identify his or her boss, important subordinates, or people who've previously held the prospect's position. Sure, use Google and LinkedIn as first steps, but try to find more on Facebook, alumni sites, and public databases such as Spokio. Putting in time to become truly knowledgeable about the targeted business and your prospect doesn't just give you an edge in positioning your products and services. It also demonstrates to your prospect that you're serious about getting their business and that you're a true professional. Okay, you've done your research and have some knowledge about the business and your prospect. You should now be able to say something intelligent about what you've learned. An empty compliment is worse than worthless, but a well-informed compliment is a foot in the door. What is it about your prospect's company that you found impressive during your research? It could be a recent company achievement or a milestone, the look of their website, personal experience with their products. As long as it's true and relevant, it will be met positively. If it's insightful, even better. Stay away from personal compliments on this first call, unless your prospect has recently had a newsworthy professional achievement. Don't mention personal or non-business information until you get to know them better. The best introduction you can have is a direct referral from someone that your prospect knows and trusts. If you have that, great, but it's a big world and it's tough to always have a connection. The next best thing is to make a verifiable reference to a company that your prospect knows. Here's where the good customer service after the sale comes in. When you are able to refer to your client base during an introductory call, you establish credibility with your prospect. Always build a referral or a reference into your first call. Here's the thing. The people you're calling are people just like you. They're human beings with goals and aspirations, good days and bad days, friends and family. 
A prospect is not a number, and if you treat the call like they're a number, you're going to get poor results. The best prospectors are people who view each call they make as an opportunity to connect and help the person at the other end of the line, as well as make the sale. We all know the stereotype of a selfish sales rep in hit-and-run mode. So before you pick up the phone, look at yourself in the mirror and remind yourself of who you are and how you've helped others. If you genuinely care about the person you're meeting on the phone, it will come through louder than any single thing that you might say. This doesn't mean you'll end up BFFs with everyone you reach, but a caring attitude makes the work more enjoyable and will definitely improve your results. Want the killer secret to being a great prospector and having an outstanding sales career? It's in providing a no-strings-attached personal benefit to your prospects and clients every time you reach them. Use the knowledge you've gained about your prospect and their company and give them something valuable every time you interact. This doesn't mean giving them a discount or free products. It may mean a little information you found out about a competitor or a heads up about a trade show or professional event coming up, letting them know about a typo on their website, offering a new white paper your company has just finished. Always call a new prospect, or an old client for that matter, with something that will help them be professionally successful. Not only will it make the call go smoother, but a pattern of being genuinely helpful will get your calls returned and make your prospect a customer for life. Vary your approach to an individual over time and approach different people in the organization. You don't expect to make one phone call and waltz into Procter & Gamble or Qualcomm, do you? Getting into strategic accounts is a process, not a single action. When we say vary your approach, we mean two things. Vary the message and also vary your medium. Changing up your message is like fishing trying different bait until you find what works. When prospecting, dangle different reasons why a next step may benefit your prospect until you find what's important to them. Maybe you think cost savings is your service's primary benefit, but maybe your prospect is more interested in how it will improve shipment times. Vary how you're trying to reach the prospect as well. For example, some people may be open to a phone call, others only respond via email, Sometimes, you may have to break the ice with an overnight envelope and an introductory letter, and some people may only respond when you're able to meet them in person at an industry event. Remember, you're in it for the long haul. Almost no one returns your cold call if you call once and leave a message. Persistence is a core quality of successful salespeople. The problem is always that a prospect just doesn't want to be pounded repeatedly with calls and messages. You can't just leave a message every day for a year and expect to get an appointment. Varying your approach and trying to reach your prospect beyond just calling can help you differentiate yourself and break in. Always be aware that you are probably not the only person with a similar product or solution who is approaching your prospect. Can you imagine how often a high-profile leader or buyer is approached by salespeople? Anyone can buy a list of VPs working for manufacturing companies in Chicago, and literally thousands do. Cold callers are queued up for an onslaught with the victim, a uh, prospect, in their crosshairs. You're not like that, and you need to prove it. The same way as you have to differentiate your product or service in the market, you have to differentiate yourself when you approach a new prospect. How do you do that? There are many strategies, and you need to find one that's right for your personality and industry. But here are a few tips in how to come up with a way to make your call enjoyable and memorable. First, review the Sales Divi videos on using your voice and establishing cold call rapport. Second, just like weak pickup lines, gimmicky opening lines don't work. Be natural and change what you say with every call. Third, be respectful that your prospect may be busy and likely gets calls from a lot of salespeople. Don't make anyone walk through a script. Use bullet points to remind you of what you want to say and what you want to find out. Use the 10 always as a template for building your bullet points. 
Lastly, if you use the 10 always when you call, you'll be differentiating yourself from all the people out there that think of sales as something other than a profession. Getting FaceTime is an old concept in sales. It means getting meaningful interaction with your prospects. It's the way to get them to remember your face and name when it comes time for a buying event. Especially when pursuing big accounts, the time for them to buy from you might not be this afternoon. But if a buying event pops up in three months, you want to be the first person they call. FaceTime doesn't have to be in-person time. With some exceptions, the days of prospecting in person are gone. You're not likely to get an appointment with the VP Marketing of General Motors by showing up in the lobby, unannounced, at the Renaissance Center in Detroit. Instead, work on developing prospect touches. Touch points include phone calls, email, snail mail, personal visits, and running into the prospect at an industry or social event. Remember to provide a benefit to your prospect at every interaction and work on getting FaceTime intervals comfortable to your prospect. It will pay off. Everyone is busy. The busiest people are the ones who don't have time to tell others how busy they are and certainly don't have 15 unscheduled minutes to spend on the phone in the middle of a workday. Always thinking busy means you have a mindset when you're talking to a prospect that you're both busy people seeking to maximize their productivity. This should be your attitude on every call. I'm busy, you're busy. Let's get something important accomplished quickly and get on to less important things. Chances are that your prospect is busy when you're trying to reach them for the first time. The cardinal rule is to respect their time. You need to think busy and get to the point with specifics. You should always be the one to begin the process of winding down a sales call. Never be dragging out a call to the tolerance point of your prospect. Some people have an internal clock that tells them when a certain amount of time has passed. Others listen for clues that their audience is restless. If you're good at this, great, don't ignore your instincts. But for the rest of us, remind yourself before and during the call to think busy and make the best use of your prospect's time. Be the first person to end the call, and that will signal your respect for their time, as well as demonstrate that you're a business peer with a busy agenda yourself. Always pick up the phone with an action plan that always has a clear objective. You should establish very clearly a set of goals for the call, and these goals include small achievements as well as the home run. For example, your ultimate goal for the introductory call may be to get a meeting time set up to do a more in-depth sales call. Success may mean you can get the prospect to agree to a 30-minute call and to invite other interested parties from the target company. Whatever your ultimate goal is, make sure you're crystal clear on a single, reasonable objective. But there is more than one goal for the call. You also have other subordinate objectives. For instance, you want to make sure you're actually talking to the right contact, someone who can further your goals in the account. You also want your prospect to know a few things about what you're selling so that he or she can get the right people on a later sales call. Rather than a word-for-word -word prospecting script, consider writing down your ultimate goal at the top of a piece of paper. Then write down three things you want your prospect to know and three things you want to know about your prospect. You're now thoroughly prepared for making an introductory call to a potentially important new account. As part of the 10 always principles, your action plan becomes the script for your call. Having the knowledge and attitude along with a clear plan, prepares you to confidently approach new strategic account prospects. See more of our sales training videos by visiting www.salesdivvy.com or checking out our YouTube channel. If you don't have a Sales Divvy account yet, get a free account, fill in your buyer profile, and see who wants to share leads with you.